Welcome to another thrilling episode of Hardcore SEO. My name is Eric Enga. I'm the CEO of Stone Temple Consulting. And who might you be? I'm Andrea Shoemaker. I'm a senior marketing consultant for Stone Temple Consulting. So Andrea, you have a lot of experience with helping clients recover from Panda. And if I think I've been hit by Panda, what's the first thing I should do? I'd say first make sure that it is a panda in the first place and not something else. A lot of other things could be mistaken as panda. So I'd go into your analytics tool and see if there is a pretty sharp drop off in traffic. That's usually what panda looks like. And then you can check the Moz Google al or algorithm change history, which shows you the major algorithmic updates that occurred and see if it aligns with the Panda date. It doesn't always have to because now Panda is rolled into the regular Google update, so it's not always reported, but a lot of cases that we work on occur on some of the more major Panda updates that get recorded. And then, oh, one more thing. Um, another thing I check for is Webmaster Tools to see if there's been any alerts or um, increases in your crawl errors because those can be technical issues that are mistaken for Panda also. Okay, great. So how come uh, you haven't been calling it a, uh, a Panda penalty? Why is that? So a penalty is more of a manual penalty that a Google reviewer will you know, physically look at your site and manually assign a penalty and then you have to go and submit a reconsideration request. With Panda, you don't submit a reconsideration request. It's just an algorithmic ranking factor. Okay, and so we, now we've determined that we actually have been hit by Panda. Um, what, what are my next steps? How do I start working on recovering? So I would go back into your analytics tool and segment your, you know, look at only your organic traffic and then look at your landing pages and segment them out by the different page archetypes and see if there are certain page types that are hit harder than others. Usually there's some pretty strong signals that there are some pages are really the problem areas more than others. And then once you figured out which pages are the problem areas, you need to take a good hard look at your content. And there's two parts of the recovery. The first is removing, no indexing, and consolidating a lot of the content. And the second is adding a lot of quality content to what you have. Um, the first part with removing content, it's usually pretty significant. You, a lot of times companies have to take a big hatchet to their content. You know, we've worked on projects where we've removed eight, no indexed 80% of the site before they had any comeback from Panda, unfortunately. And also, you know, in cases like that, it's usually a business strategy issue. Um, you know, they're using a lot of content from other sources or they have many, many pages which are basically the same with a template where only certain keywords are swapped out on each page. So, you know, pretty significant amount of removing content. Um, and that's usually really hard because, you know, a site that's suffering from Panda already has a significant traffic loss and then you have to remove more pages that might still be getting traffic. So that's a hard concept to get across, but it's very important for the recovery. And the other thing to know is that um, the benefits from removing those pages are not realized until there's another Panda update that um, takes into account the changes that you've made. And that could be a matter of months, but you know it's a matter of short-term losses for longer-term benefit. Um, and also, you know, the whole, with that in mind, that's why the second part, the adding valuable content um, is so important. Uh, you know, that's the type of content that's going to set you aside from other sites. Uh, you know, you could hire an authoritative expert to write for you, or you need to think about how your site can become an authority on the topic um, in your field. And, you know, adding content that's going to withstand the scrutiny of other experts in your field as well. Yeah, no, so that's great. Uh, I think that's a, a great tip and a very important one that I think a lot of people miss is 
is just that the content has to be so good that other authorities in the field actually would enjoy reading it mm -hmm. and not just view it as spew out there for other people to read. So um, one last question. Uh, well, actually, the last question is any last tips for, for people for us to close out? So um, we usually like to have a plan A and a plan B for sites because we want to undergo a recovery with as little short-term negative effects as possible. Um, so plan A will be you know, hitting the most significant issues, getting the most pages, and plan B is usually a more severe approach that you know, plan A, you might wait three months, and after that point, you might have to go to plan B. You know, every case is different though. Some sites need, need, might need to go directly to plan B. Um, and the other thing is that even though this sounds so hard to deal with, it really is important to get out from under a panda. Because if you're under a panda, your traffic continues to slowly dwindle. And um, you know, once you're out of a panda, you might not be back at 100%, but at least you're free of any negative ranking factors. Right, so one path is if you don't deal with it, it's the long, slow death, if, as it were. Yeah. But if you do deal with it, even if you only get 50, 60, 80 percent of your traffic back, you're on the road to a long, fruitful future and you can rebuild your business again. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Andrea. And thank you, audience. We hope to see you next time.